Hey everybody, it's me, Dana Lynn Knuckles, the People's Oracle. I'm here to bring you a reading for the full moon in Sidereal Pisces. I've got my 2021 Sidereal Astrology Guide here, which can be found at peoplesworld.com. Just click shop. There's still prints and bound versions, which I will put on sale uh, very soon, hopefully today by the time I post this video. Um, and there are PDF versions that you can download and print at your leisure, at your pleasure. I always like to start these new and full moon readings by going to the back of the 2021 Sidereal Astrology Guide and looking to see which fill in the blank we have. So down here on the 20th, which is today of September, it says full moon in Pisces, seeing clearly what is implied by and you are instructed to fill in the blank with the meanings of the singular house in your sidereal birth chart that has Pisces in it. You will know that if you have filled out the houses in my birth chart table and you have followed the instructions at thepeoplesoracle.com uh, to cast your sidereal birth chart using astro.com. It's free, most accurate calculations, and it shows you how to cast your sidereal birth chart in a way that I do, so that you can use the information I've given here to you today, as well as what's in this guide. Seeing clearly what is implied by. Pisces is one of four mutable signs. Mutable is a category in astrology called a mode. I think that's a pretty ambiguous word that doesn't really describe what we're talking about. For me, a mode is a task. And so each of the modes, there are three, has a specific task their experiences are oriented around. For mutable signs, which are Pisces, where the moon is at the full moon today, Virgo, where the sun and Mars and Mercury are at currently during this full moon, uh, then Pisces, or sorry, Sagittarius, there's nothing there, and then Gemini, there's nothing there right now. So those four mutable signs all have the same task which is certainty to know how do you know what you know to discern the truth to be as accurate as possible right we have to be able to tell the difference between a stick and a poisonous snake snake in order to survive but we also have to be able to tell the difference between an angry disposition vocal tone body language uh, and someone that is welcoming and open in order to survive. Navigating the emotional realities of the people around us is one of the primary uh, things that we need to have an accurate, truthful understanding and knowledge of in order to survive. Um, so when we are talking about the task of mutable signs, it is to know. And the gift and the ultimate work of mutable signs is discernment. So in the full moon in Pisces, fill in the blank, when we're talking about seeing clearly what is implied by, there is a confrontation between planets and Virgo, which takes things at face value. If it looks like a duck, walks like a duck, talks like a duck, right? Then we know that it is a duck for Virgo. But Pisces is like, you know, honestly, I bet you he got on a duck costume. I bet you he learned how to walk like a duck. And I bet you he got a fake recording of a duck quacking just to make us think it's a duck, right? So Pisces is the skeptic. It's the one that says, it is not safe. Um, and I cannot come to accurate, meaningful conclusions and form accurate judgments about what I'm experiencing or witnessing if I take things at face value. So seeing clearly what is implied by nothing is splitting the difference. It's the discernment that allows us to not completely reject everything that we see and rooting ourselves in a kind of paranoia, uh, skeptical conspiracy theory, um, distrust of everyone and everything but also being able to understand that not everything is what it appears to be and that appearances can be deceiving and that people actually have motivations, right? And that if we can discern people's motivations, discern people's uh, using empathy, right? Discern what they're feeling, what they're thinking or what their motivation might be behind something, we may be able to get a more accurate picture. So in your sidereal birth chart, where is the house, the singular house that has Pisces? And where is the singular house that has Virgo? Um, in the fill in the blanks here, 
in the back, I'm at September, if I can check my pages, right? Right? We have at the top there, Mars and Virgo organizing tasks, and then the sun entered Virgo on the 16th. And the fill in the blank, blank for sun and Virgo is focusing on perceiving the facts. Whereas the full moon in Pisces fill in the blank is seeing clearly what is implied by. Seeing clearly what is implied by the facts and the data, right? Numbers, uh, research, all of those things. Numbers, research, uh, all of the quantifiable material, tangible information just gives us pieces of the puzzle, but we have to sew it together with the things that aren't visible. So what are the stories that you are piecing together from the data and the facts? What is the pattern or the meaning that emerges when you finally get enough information to pull things together? And how much information is enough information to know the truth? That's the question. What images, what stories can bring us clarity as we are developing discernment? We've got here the Three of Cups. The Three of Cups is a card of camaraderie and siblinghood. In the cards, there's three women, so it can be sisterhood. Uh, but it is a card of bonding and coming together and sharing and intimacy and closeness. Not with family, because that's going to be the Ten of Cups. But the Three of Cups can be your friend group, your chosen family, or your family, right? Who are you coming together with? Who are you deepening bonds and connection with? Who are you sharing and developing intimacy with? Um, I think that one of the gifts of Pisces and that those who have Pisces in their birth chart, sidereal Pisces, one of the gifts they offer and bring to the people in their lives is to be able to see beyond the, the words and to hear, hear beyond the words and to see beyond the actions, to know what's really going on, right? But this is what Pisces does. Pisces is like, hey, how you doing? Oh yeah, man, I'm good. And Pisces is like, you, sh you sure about that? Now, this can go really far. Um, and this is where the context of the relationship is really important. One of the things I talk to my clients who have sidereal Pisces about is something called consenting to intimacy. And just because you can perceive someone's inner emotional reality, if they have not invited you in that space, if they have not given you permission and consent to uh, speak on what you see, sometimes it's best to just keep it to yourself, right? It can feel imposing, it can feel uh, suffocating for someone to constantly be looking beneath the surface. Sometimes people say, I'm all right, I'm good, because they're not in the space to talk about it. They have not processed it yet. They don't know that they're feeling it yet. They have not given it words or language yet. And so sidereal Pisces and wherever that sign is in our birth chart is the space where we're constantly learning to discern the truth and, and when what is presented at face value to us is contradicting what we perceive on a non-physical level. What do we do with that information? There is a way that being seen, for someone to be able to feel and see the feelings that you just aren't in the space to be aware of or process, it can feel safe and it can feel attuned. Like, wow, they really pay attention to me. They really know me because they know that even though I'm saying I'm not okay, they can feel, or even though I'm saying I am okay, they can feel that I'm not okay, right? Sometimes as simple as, hey, just checking on you to see if you're good. But remember, right, what's the balance of that? If you have an anxious attachment style, constantly checking in to see how someone else is feeling and trying to figure out whether what you're perceiving at face value is in conflict with what you are perceiving on a body level, 
right? This is a this is kind of a trauma response too. So are you consciously doing it? Do you have consent to this kind of intimacy and and sharing what you see and what you know? Or is it best to keep it to yourself? So, so who are these people that you're building and sharing intimacy with? We've got the Eight of Wands. Oh man. So one of the things that um, that I found uh, prevalent during this time is how we have come to know things about people that maybe we don't want to know, right? Maybe we've come to learn and discover things about people that give us a little bit more intimacy than we're comfortable with. That sometimes not knowing is better than knowing, right? Sometimes not knowing the political inclinations of certain people um, allows you to maintain a relationship in a way that's meaningful and valuable, whereas a lot of us are really learning more about people than we really want to know. And it's making us question our associations and who can we trust, you know? So I think that with the Eight of Wands and the Three of Cups under this full moon in Sidereal Pisces, which is today, uh, September 20th, 2021, I think that there is a moment of clarity around uh, the true nature of our relationships. Uh, what is the fruit of intimacy that you have been building over the course of this year, last year? We can even reflect back to things that were happening at the new moon in Pisces earlier this year, which would have been in April 2021. We can reflect back to the very long Mars retrograde in Pisces, which I believe November of 2020 would have been a significant moment. Uh, October and November of 2020, in terms of there being a new moon and full moon across the Virgo Pisces axis in October, and then Mars stationary direct in Pisces, right? Uh, November. And there was a lot going on towards the middle and end of November across that sign axis of Virgo and Pisces. So reflecting on that time period and earlier this year, can you make any connections with what's happening and the clarity that you're coming to? Uh, what's the truth you are able to discern? And is this truth something that brings you closer? Is this truth something that makes you focus your attention on certain relationships and leave others behind? Is this something that deepens the intimacy with people that you have? Um, one of the things I know about this time as well is that it's required resourcefulness from us. And resourcefulness for a lot of us has meant we have not been able to forge new connections. We haven't been able to expand our community. It's been a time of contraction. It's been a time of severing as you come to understand that there are people you've been in community or relationship with that who do not hold the same values of you and that you realize that these are not people that you can share the burden of survival with. There's no sense of shared suffering that leads us to protect ourselves and each other. Um, so there's a kind of resourcefulness, though, that has either made existing relationships deepen and get more serious or sever long-time connections. There's been a migrants, right? Lots of people uh, migrating, rather. Lots of people moving around across country and leaving behind all that's familiar. And so, so how are we forging intimacy at this time? How are we deepening and building connections? How are we allowing ourselves to be seen and seen in an emotional way, not in terms of identity, but the kind of attunement that makes us feel like somebody actually does care for us? Are we open to that? Are you open to that? Are you really open to the vulnerability and discomfort that can come from someone knowing how you feel despite your best efforts of hiding it, right? Are you, are you, are you okay with that? Um, the Eight of Wands is a card that I always say, whew, well, that escalated quickly. So this means to me that the kinds of realizations and the discernment of this moment will be deeply clarifying for us. And it will also 
bring to the fore for us the fact that there are a lot of things that have already been set in motion in terms of our relationships with each other broadly and our deeper, more intimate, personal connections that we have. There are things that have already been set in motion and you may not be able to stop them at this time. So you may just have to deal with the consequences of this moment and what it has to do with your relationships, as well as taking the information and integrating it into um, the data set that you have. And how flexible are you in terms of shifting and changing your story when you get new information, especially when you get new information that contradicts what it is that you already know or what it is that you already believe when it comes to intimacy and when it comes to relationships how are you integrating the information of even new experiences you've had over the past year into your story of what's possible for you in relationships and what intimacy looks like for you I hope you've enjoyed this today. Don't forget to like, comment, follow, subscribe, and share this with your loved ones. Happy full moon.